Hello, I am Mira Baljuk from the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. And my name is Kamila Kotkanikua from the Gdańsk University of Technology in Poland. We are members of the NOL, the European Network of Open Education Librarians. We are delighted to bring you the sixth episode of our series dedicated to the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, OER. This episode is one of the five OE bytes. Each byte is dedicated to one of the five action areas of the UNESCO OER recommendation. We will keep them short and digestible, a delicious bite of open education for you. In this episode, we are going to explore the third area of action addressed by recommendation, namely encouraging effective, inclusive, and equitable access to quality OER. Let's take a closer look at how UNESCO defines and addresses this area of action. Encouraging effective, inclusive, and equitable access to quality OER spans a range of topics. The section area centers around the diversity of stakeholders, their interests, context, culture, needs, and material circumstances. A more equitable, inclusive, and diverse open education environment means one that is also inclusive of learners in formal and non-formal education contexts, irrespective of their age, gender, physical ability, socioeconomic status, or any other characteristics. To be truly open, OER needs to be accessible to vulnerable and minority groups, people residing in areas affected by conflicts and natural disasters, displaced persons, and those disadvantaged by discrimination or simply people who speak different languages. In order to achieve this, the UNESCO OER recommendation encourages member states and other actors to adapt strategies and programs involving technological solutions that provide equitable and indiscriminate access to such materials. These efforts also aim to provide space for maximized co-creation, curation, reuse, remixing, and searchability of OER. It is therefore also crucial uh, to provide materials that support gender equality, non-discrimination, accessibility, and inclusivity, while enabling the creation, access, reuse, adaptation, and redistribution of educational materials. But how do academic libraries fit into this, being an important stakeholder in implementing inclusive and equitable access to OER? For the answers, we once again turn to the recently published Spark Europe 2022 survey report, Open Education in European Libraries of Higher Education, implementing the UNESCO OER recommendation. When asked whether libraries take proactive steps to provide or create inclusive, culturally equitable, linguistically diverse and accessible OER, most respondents tend to design OER to make resources more accessible for a range of users. Such preference for accessibility before the other three categories might be connected to the core business of libraries, providing access to all types and forms of educational materials, such as books, journals, and others. Linguistic diversity come in, uh, comes in second place. After all, academic libraries are interested in providing suitable materials for their local patrons. That is why language adaptation tends to be so popular among response. These developments show that there is a general need for more targeted work at academic institutions and beyond to address the still limited access to open education and quality OER, which speak to and reflect a more inclusive, equitable, and diverse society. According to the report, 31% of respondents already promote effective and inclusive access to OE or OE strategies and programs. While the rest of the surveyed libraries consider it not applicable, do not know of any such initiatives or do not promote such access at all. What can we advise 59% of libraries and librarians that have not yet started promoting effective and inclusive access to OE, OE strategies or programs? To begin with, we advise you to examine your immediate user group, other persons with disabilities or vulnerable disadvantaged groups among them. Try to determine their needs by organizing a meeting, starting a discussion, or conducting a survey on how the uh, information education needs are being met and how not. 
It is also important to check what existing diversity, equity, and inclusion broader policies and program exists uh, at your institution. We know from the survey results that most of the libraries that address all diversity, equity, and inclusion areas do so by following institutional strategies and programs that address diversity, equity, and inclusion. Therefore, it is very effective to seek change by referring to the institutional level. Once you have this information at hand, see if you can inform the institutional decision makers of your findings. Share your ideas on where you might start with reviewing existing policies and programs and adapting them to be more inclusive and reflective of the academic community of your institution. But what can you do in your immediate area of responsibility at the library? We, ad we advise you to start small. First, addressing the simplest issues that those uh, that the survey groups have identified at most important. In this process, make sure to define indicators of effectiveness that you can later verify. It is always a good idea to first test the adapted resources within a small pilot project. This way, you can also observe and verify the indicators of effectiveness related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Collecting user feedback is a useful tool for verifying these indicators. Can you start with just one really useful resource, perhaps? You can adapt existing OER or create new ones, inclusive, diverse, and accessible by design, that respond to the needs of different user groups. As an example, consider checking if you are welcoming all people with the graphic elements and images you use in OER. Can they recognize themselves in these pictures? Do they feel represented? Are you using alternative texts for people who cannot see the images? While you're at it, consider creating a variety of OER formats, including online and offline ones, to accommodate people with different modes and levels of access to technology and varying learning needs. You can also include the matters of effective, inclusive, and equitable access in the OER quality standards when advising the faculty on OER reuse, remix, adaptation, or creation. Always try to involve and mix representatives of different user groups so that the members can get to know each other and perhaps form a community base on shared interests and needs while rep representing diversities at the same time. From a long-term perspective, it is beneficial to continue collaborating with library colleagues and partnering with other departments, teachers, and learners while advocating the need for greater equity in education for all. Last but not least, be patient and persistent. Some groups take time to open up and start co-working with you, but such collaborative diversity will deliver fruitful results. In this episode, we shared with you the overview of the third area of action, encouraging effective, inclusive, and equitable access to quality OER, and recommendations for implementing it at academic libraries. After all, libraries have always been home to a wide range of diverse resources, of different sizes, depth, and authorship, all coexisting with dignity and striving to provide access to the wealth of human knowledge. It is only natural that academic libraries should continue this tradition by encouraging effective, inclusive, and equitable access to open education and open educational resources. Thank you for listening to this Open Education Guide. The next final bite will explore the fourth area of action of the UNESCO recommendation on open educational resources, namely nurturing the creation of sustainability models of OER. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.